something came across my desk as I was working on a video. There was an individual who just put out a video stating that preachers, ministers, those who are self-supported, doing the work of God, preaching the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ in these last days, who are presenting present truth for this time, that individual says that we are a bunch of cult. And the individual went as far as to compare us to Jim Jones. For those of you who do not remember or do not know who Jim Jones was, he was a man, a charismatic preacher who led over 900 people to commit suicide through what they called Kool-Aid. And as you could see, mass suicide in Guyana, cult, 300 dead found at site. Cult leader found dead in Guyana, suicide put at 409. Again, which was a total of over 900 people that we were told were, mur were killed as a result of following this leader. Now, this is the boat. This is the category that this individual who just put out this video on social media and encouraging many Seventh-day Adventists to share this, this is the boat that this individual has put us in. Now, keep in mind, these individuals that are talking this way, they are part of the organization. They are the Nicodemuses. They are the Joseph of Arimathea. They understand, they know, they proclaim part of the truth. They acknowledge Jesus as their Savior. They proclaim one part of the three angels' messages, but not the second part of the three angels' messages. Once again, for those of you who do not understand what that means, the uh, three angels' messages has two parts. It's a two-part message. When we look at Revelation 14, 6 and 7, it says, And there follow another angel saying, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. Worship Him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the fountain of waters. That's verse 7 of Revelation 14. This is a twofold message. That message says first, as Spirit of Prophecy tells us, comparing that message with Isaiah 58, which verse 1 tells us, Cry aloud, spare nigh, spare not. Show my people their transgression in the house of Jacob their sin. Part of the first angel's message, the first part of it, is for God's people to cry aloud. Just like Jesus says to the disciples, go not to the way of the Gentiles, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. They need to hear that message first, and uh, the present truth message for this time will cause a shaking within God's people. Now, it is those within, not, not within, I should say, not who are, those who are not under the organization, the general conference, these are the ones that can fully, freely preach that message. Just like Christ, He calls the disciples out one by one. He says, follow me, follow me. And when Christ says to follow Him, in other words, not just follow Him as their personal Savior, not just follow Him as their Redeemer, but also follow Him instead of the rabbis, of the Pharisees, instead of the teachings of the religious leaders in those days. Now, speaking of Christ calling the disciples to follow Him, what title did they give to our loving Savior Jesus Christ as He was calling some to follow Him? Notice with me, go to your Bible, to the book of Matthew with me. Matthew chapter 9. Notice carefully in verse 32 of the book of Matthew chapter 9. We are responding to this message that says that we, those of us who are part of the self-supported group, that we are a cult. And uh, if those who are supporting us don't take heed, don't come out, same thing that happened to those who follow Jim Jones, they are saying this is what's going to, uh, to happen. Now, they're using this scare tactic to scare you. They're using this scare tactic to say, oh no, 
Then, you know, we're going to drink the Kool-Aid as well. They are basically accusing us of being a cult, but also that we will lead people to commit suicide as well. Notice with me. God forbid, brothers and sisters. Notice verse 32 of Matthew 9. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake, and the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never seen in Israel. But notice carefully. But the Pharisees said, He, Jesus, casteth out devils through the prince of the devil. So what title again did they give Christ? That he was working for the devil. He was an agent for the devil. He was a cult. If you follow him, he will lead you eventually to drink the Kool-Aid. Notice carefully another passage here. Let's go now to the same book we're looking at, this time chapter 12. Chapter 12 of Matthew. Notice carefully in chapter 12 of Matthew. The Bible tells us in verse 22. Chapter 12, verse 22. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed them, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. So again, what was the title there? They call Jesus the devil. N notice, it goes on to say, verse 25, And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of, of God is come unto you. And what kind of work Jesus was all, I should ask. How did Jesus go about to do this work? In a self-supported way. When we look at Luke chapter 4, you can also read part of that in Matthew chapter 4. Jesus, the Bible tells us, came to Nazareth as his custom was, went to the temple on the Sabbath, and he was worshiping God there. Then they, were give, they gave unto him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Then as Jesus read this in their hearing, he says that this scripture has been fulfilled. That in other words, he was saying Daniel chapter 9 has been fulfilled. The prophecy that pinpoint the exact time that the Messiah was going to come. They knew about this. Read this from the Desire of Ages. They knew about the time that the Messiah was going to come, but they have a preconceived idea, false teachings. They did not prepare the people for the coming of the Messiah, the first ad advent. Now keep in mind, this was the organization in the days. Now, Jesus did not start another church. Did you know that? Jesus did not start another church, another organization. Jesus started a movement within the church to do the work that the church had failed to do. Now, as they rejected him after he said in your hearing, this has been fulfilled. Go to Luke, Luke chapter 4. Notice carefully in Luke chapter 4 and notice carefully what the Word of God tells us here. Luke chapter 4. Let's study the Word of God here so we can now uh, reject this myth that we are called or working for the devil as they were accusing Jesus of here. Notice carefully. Jesus tell them, rebuke them, he says in verse 23, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. They will call you the devil. Notice. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows. Keyword. Widows. 
were in Israel in the days of who? Elias, another key name there, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout the, all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Serapta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. Again, it repeats this again, unto a woman that was a widow. Now, when we look at context in the Bible, there's a reason why God repeats things, especially if it's Jesus himself talking here. As we know, that is our loving Savior speaking here. He said this is a widow in verse, in the previous verse that we looked at here, in verse 25. Then in verse 26, the latter part, he says, a woman that was a widow. He repeats that again. There's a reason. What does a woman represent in the Bible? A church. Now, a widow, she was a widow. That means she was self-supported. Now, context again, as I covered this before, we studied this so many times before. You have Elijah, the true prophet of God, during the three and a half years of this famine, of, of, of this drought in Israel. Let's make the spiritual application, spiritual drought. At that time, God sent his true servant, to this widow, to this self-supported church while there was apostasy in the land. Was the, while there was apostasy in the land. And then he also mentioned the story of Elisha. We've gone over this before. And how Naaman, who was a leopard, was the only one who was cured of his leprosy while there were many lepers, as Jesus says, in Israel, but none of them were cured. Why? Because they did not believe in victory over sin. Because the conference in those days was not preaching victory over sins anymore. Was not preaching the sanctuary message where we can be cleansed from all our filthiness. They were preaching a message that you all are welcome, just stay as you are. Now, as I mentioned before, those ministers, those individuals that are preaching this, they want you to stay to serve the conference as they are serving, serving the conference. These men are not serving God. They know what's happening. They will never open their mouth. This individual who put out this video will never open his mouth and say anything about the abomination that we have been looking at week after week after week after week. Why? because they do not want to lose their position. They do not want to lose their position. These are the Nicodemuses, these are the Ar Ar Joseph of Arimathea, coming at night to see Jesus. They don't want to associate themselves with the self-supported group. Now, again, what title did they give Jesus? They call him the son of the devil, or he was working for the devil, they call him Beelzebub. Notice on the screen here what the Bible tells us here or as well. Matthew 10, 25. It is enough, Jesus says to the disciples, for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house, what? Beelzebub. How much more shall they call them of his household? So it's no surprise that they are calling us a cult. It's no surprise that they are comparing us with Jim Jones. And when you look at that video that this individual put out, he played videos of Jim, Jim Jones, many clips over and over and over to scare you, to scare you that, hey, you better be careful here because these uh, uh, self-supported ministers these uh, so-called present truth ministers will eventually take you to their places and get you to drink the Kool-Aid and you'll die. This is a scare tactic because you know why? Again, these men are serving the conference. These men are serving the conference. Now, speaking of Elijah, speaking of Christ himself, remember the story that Jesus used there was the story of Elijah. We were also told by the word of God that in these last days, there will be some who will rise up in the power and spirit of Elijah to proclaim the final message for this time. 
and those God will raise up, notice carefully with me, to proclaim this message, they will not just talk about what the papacy is doing as that individual is, has been doing along with Doug Batchelor and many others. They only talk about what the papacy is doing, but never talk about what's happening within the church. The abomination is worse within the church than outside of the church. They're not talking about that. But Elijah was not like that. He was main, mainly concerned. His mission w was to show the apostles within the church and call them to repentance. So now, the Bible also tells us in the last days, there will be some who will rise up in the power and spirit of Elijah, just like prior to the first advent of Christ, God did raise an individual in the power and spirit of uh, El Elijah as well. Let's go to the book of Isaiah with me. Isaiah chapter 40. Notice carefully in the book of Isaiah chapter 40 where this was also prophesied. Notice in chapter 40, the Bible tells us in verse 1, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith the, your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she have received of the Lord's hand double for, her, for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and, and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. What else will happen? And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord have spoken it. Who was this again that the Bible says will come to prepare the way of the Lord? And as a result of proclaiming a fearful message, a warning message, that every mountain shall be made low, all the crooks shall be made straight. Who was this individual that the Bible is referring to? Let's go to the book of Elijah. As we know, you can also look at Malachi chapter 4 as well. It tells us about the same prophecy. But in the New Testament, Luke chapter 1, this is none other, as many of you already know, than John the Baptist, who came in the power, in the spirit of Elijah. Notice, John, Luke rather, Luke chapter 1, verse 17 again. Now this is the angel Gabriel who was sent to Zacharias to tell him that him and his wife, Elizabeth, will bear a son in their old age. Notice carefully, but Zacharias did not believe, had doubt about this because of his old age. Then the Bible tells us, verse 17, And he shall go before him in the spirit, and what else? And power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So this child, will come in the power and spirit of Elias or Elijah. Now, did Christ recognize that John the Baptist was the one who came in the power of Elias? Keep in mind, John the Baptist was where again? In the wilderness, away from Phariseeism, away from the teachings of uh, the Pharisees. Again, did Christ recognize the ministry of John the Baptist, his, the self-supported ministry of John the Baptist. Go to Matthew with me, Matthew chapter 11. Backward to the book of Matthew chapter 11. Notice what the Word of God tells us here. In Matthew chapter 11, let's look at verse 14. Jesus is talking to the disciples. Notice carefully, well, let's back up to verse 12. He says, and from the days of uh, John the Baptist, until now, the kingdom of heaven suffer violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until who? John. And I notice carefully, if ye will receive it. This is who? This is Elias, which for to come. So Christ says, that is the Elias that the angel Gabriel prophesied about. That is the Elias 
that Isaiah 40 talked about that who will prepare the way of the Lord. That is the Elias that as well that they had rejected, they, the Pharisees, had rejected. Now let's go to chapter 17. Chapter 17. The context of what we are sharing here was John the Baptist part of the Sanhedrin, the denomination of the day, the organization? No, he was not. But was it the same religion? Yes. What was the difference? John the Baptist was exposing, was preaching a message to prepare the way of the Lord that the organization failed to do. Notice carefully in chapter 17. Again, Christ is speaking. He says here in verse 9, And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of, of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that, what's the name again? Elias must first come. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. Notice carefully. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. So who was it again Jesus is referring to? The Elias that came already, but they did not recognize it and did all kinds of things to, to him? He was referring to John the Baptist, as we just looked at in chapter 11. He was referring to the ministry of John the Baptist. Now, the question we would like to ask, why didn't God allow John the Baptist to receive an education, to uh, be a student under the Pharisees? Why? Notice, we're going to read some passages here on the screen. Notice carefully with me what it says here on the screen. This is from Desire of Ages 132, paragraph 2. The preaching of John had taken so deep a hold on the nation as to demand the attention of the religious authorities. The danger of insurrection caused every popular gathering to be looked upon with suspicion by the Romans. Notice carefully, then he goes on to say, And whatever pointed toward an uprising of the people, excited the fears of the Jewish rulers. John, notice carefully, had not recognized the authority of the Sanhedrin by seeking their sanction for his work. Notice, John had, had done what? Not recognize the authority of the Sanhedrin. Now, keep in mind, again, this was just one religion. This was the church in those days. What was the difference between the ministry of John the Baptist and the ministry of the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees? One ministry was proclaiming pres present truth for the moment. The other one was not. The other one was in apostasy. But it was the same religion. It was the same religion. One was self-supported, John the Baptist, the ministry of John the Baptist. The other one thought that they were rich and they had everything just like the organization to today and that is the case that this individual who put out this video saying that present truth ministries present truth ministers are cult they just like Jim Jones they're building the case for the Pharisees again they are going after John the Baptist just like Christ says that they have done all kinds of things to John the Baptist let's go back to the screen notice carefully and he had reproved rulers, John the Baptist had reproved rulers, and people, Pharisees and Sadducees alike. Yet, notice carefully, the people followed him eagerly. The interest in his work seemed to be continually increasing. Though he had not deferred to them, the Sanhedrin accounted that as a public teacher, he was under their jurisdiction. So here's the thing. Because many of us, as self-supported, we profess, we claim to be Seventh-day Adventists, and we are. So those who are saying that we are like Jim Jones, they feel threatened because we are under their jurisdiction as, as well. And the other part of what Sister White tells us here, 
that the people follow John eagerly. Well, many people are following present truth teachings eagerly in these last days. The organization is losing membership. The organization is losing money. So they have these men putting videos out there to try to scare those Seventh-day Adventists who are leaving the conference. They're using this scare tactic that we are Jim Jones, right? We are Jim, Jim Jones so, so that they can get these members back. Again, these men are serving the general conference, not Jesus Christ. Let's go back to the screen as we are looking at the ministry of Jesus and now the ministry of of John the Baptist, which was a self-supported ministry. Now keep in mind again, Sister White says, John the Baptist did not recognize the authority of the religious leaders of the conference in those days. Back to the screen, notice carefully, it says here, of John the Baptist, Christ declared, of them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater. That prophet was led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness. Notice carefully, away from the contaminating influences of the city to obtain an education that would qualify him to receive instruction from God, rather than from any other learned scribes. He was not to connect himself with the rabbi. The less he became acquainted with their teachings, their maxims and traditions, the more easily could the Lord impress his mind and heart. Now, context. The Bible tells us that in the book of Malachi, well, let's add Malachi here, then we'll come back to this quote. Go back to the book of Malachi with me. The book of Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. Notice carefully. The Bible tells us, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And that day, the day, that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. What day is that? We're talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ and the third coming of Jesus Christ according to Revelation chapter 20. Okay? That's the context there. But notice verse 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves, of the stall, and ye shall thread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. So this is obviously talking about the third coming of Jesus Christ, second coming and third coming of Jesus Christ. When God we store all things, third coming, when God will store all things, the wicked will be as ashes under our feet. But what message must be proclaimed before the second coming of Jesus Christ. What kind of spirit should we have before the second coming? Let's keep reading. Verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commended unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. When? Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, this is not only referring to John the Baptist's ministry first, prior to the first advent, but also the context here because of what is described here that will take place. That's the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, let's get the context here. Back to the screen. So she says, notice carefully, again, that prophet was led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness, away from the contaminating influences of the city, to obtain an education that would qualify him to receive instruction from God, rather than from, notice, any other learned scribes. He was not to con connect himself with the rabbi. The less he became acquainted with their teachings, their maxims and traditions, the more easily could the Lord impress his mind and heart. So if we are preparing ourselves for the second coming of Jesus Christ, we cannot remain under the scribes of today, under the organization, under the general conference of Seventh-day Adventists because we will be contaminated by their apostasy. That's the context there. If we want to be Elias, Elijah's, John the Baptist, in these last days, we cannot remain 
as we see this abomination taking place week after week. We cannot remain under the teachings. We cannot continue to support them. That does not make us a cult. That does not make us a different organization. Just like the disciples, they did not become a different organization. It was still the same church, but they were teaching and presenting present truth that the organization failed to do. It was not a different organization. We are self-supported ministries. We are not a different organization. We are not some other denomination. We are Seventh-day Adventists that are crying and sighing against the abomination. Back to the screen. Let's finish the quote. Bottom part. And give him the pure mold of truth that was to be given to the people to prepare the way of the Lord. If we want to prepare the way of the Lord, we cannot remain under this abomination because our mind will be contaminated by the teaching of the Pharisees. Back to the screen again. She goes on to say now, the teachings of the scribes and Pharisees were of a character to turn the people to God or away. Away from the unadulterated truth that was to be presented by the great teacher when he should enter upon his mission. The only hope of the people, what was it? Was to open their hearts and minds to the light sent from heaven by this prophet, John the Baptist, who came in the power and spirit of Elias, the forerunner of Christ. These lessons are for us, those who claim to know the truth and understand the great work to be done for this time, are to consecrate themselves to God, soul, body, and spirit. These lessons are for us. These lessons are for you and I living in the last days. Spirit of Prophecy tells us, way back then, there was a time when Spirit of Prophecy, Sister White, used to say that when the general conference convened, come together, that is the presence of God. But later on, context, she changed that. Several times she said, they are no longer the voice of God or the presence of God is no longer within that assembly. So again, go back to the Bible on the screen. Notice carefully, Matthew 11, 18, 19. Jesus says this about John. For John came neither eating nor drinking. And they say, he hath what? A devil. The son of man came eating and drinking. And they say, behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. So those who are saying that the, those of us who are part of self-supported ministries, who claim to be Seventh-day Adventists at the same time. We are a cult. They are saying the same thing that the Pharisees said about John the Baptist, that he had the devil. Because they compare us with Jim Jones. That means we have the devil. Because what Jim Jones did, who inspired him to do that? The devil. So if you are comparing us with Jim Jones, so you are saying the same thing, that they said about John the Baptist, he had the devil, or the same thing that he said about Jesus, that he was working for the devil, and he was a gluttoner, a wine bibber, and a friend of publican and, and sinners. So again, as I mentioned, they are using a scare tactic, showing videos of Jim John over and over and over again. That's a scare tactic, brothers and sisters. It's a scare tactic. Make you feel like you're gonna die. If you continue to support present truth ministries, that, that is a deception, brothers and sisters. They want you to serve the conference, the general conference. I'm going to show you a passage here that, that also tells us it's not biblical. But here is some of the scare tactic. Notice back to the screen. It says here from the Daily Mail, we turn to Camp Suicide. 30 years on, could the nightmare of Jonestown happen again? It was a horror that defined all season. 1,000 Americans brainwashed into taking, notice, Cyanad by their deranged leader. That is a, the exact claim, the exact accusation that this individual who put 
out this video against self-supported ministry, self-supported minister. That's the same claim. Notice another article again from Independent this time. Johnstown massacre had 918 people, followed a cult leader to Guyana, drank the water again, the Kool-Aid, and died in a single day. In other words, they are telling you that you're going to drink this Kool-Aid. You're going to be led away and uh, get the poison by these, uh, as they put it, so-called uh, self-supported ministries, and, and you're going to die. Well, the Bible tells us there is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out all fear. If we love the truth, Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. If we love Him with all our hearts, might, and soul, when we hear the truth, we will not be afraid to follow the truth. Again, as I mentioned before, these men are Joseph of Arimathea. They, they are the ones who are afraid of uh, telling the truth as it is found in Jesus Christ. Notice on the screen. Notice carefully. The leaders in the Jewish nation had signally failed of fulfilling God's purpose for His chosen people. Those whom the Lord had made the depositaries of truth had proved unfaithful to their trust. And God, notice, chose others to do His work. So, if the organization failed to do the work, if the organization, as we looked at so many times, is shaking hands with the papacy, the men of sin, the one that Paul says, we should expose in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the one that we should expose. But yet we are meeting with him. We are promoting their agenda. Then there must be a people who will be true to God to cry aloud and spare not. These men, I pray for them, that are saying that we are a cult, self-supported, Ministries within Seventh-day Adventists, who, who, who we are all called, using this care tactic, I'm praying for them. I'm, I'm praying that just like Joseph of Arimathea and uh, Nicodemus, later after the death of Christ, came back to their senses and surrendered their life to Jesus Christ, I'm praying that also they will have the courage to do so. That is my prayer for them. I don't hope, I don't wish, I should say, I don't wish anything bad to these individuals. Because I see that they have some understanding of the message for this time, but they are afraid to preach the second part of the message, or which, which is really the first part of the message. They're only focusing on if the Pope sneeze here, sneezes here, cough here. Oh, the, they talk about that. But they will not talk about what our leaders are doing, the, in this ecumenical movement, they, they will not talk about that because they care more about their reputation. So God will not send John the Baptist to be educated, to get an education rather, from the Pharisees because he will be contaminated, he will be corrupted. Now, the same way the, God has worked in the past, when the Jewish nation thought that they were the boat, they were the chosen people that you could not, as a matter of fact, when John started his ministry, they asked him, who gave you this authority? Did we give you the authority? They said the same thing to Jesus. They said the same thing to the disciples. And Peter stood up and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. We ought to obey God rather than men. So what happened? Well, according to the prophecy of uh, Daniel chapter 9, they were given till A.D. 31. To get their act together. Otherwise God was going to remove the pillars, the treasures from them and give it to somebody else. Well, they stoned Stephen in AD 31. Did God do this? Yes. He removed this truth from them. He removed all of these precious truth from them and has given them to somebody else who will do the work. And Sister White tells us God is very consistent. He always worked in that fashion. Notice carefully this passage on the screen here from Manuscript Releases, Volume 14, 102, Paragraph 1. The Lord Jesus 
will always have a chosen people to serve Him. When the Jewish people rejected Christ, the Prince of Life, He took from them, what? The kingdom of God and gave it unto the Gentiles. God will continue to work on this principle with every branch of His work. Now, what does the word continue mean? That means this is something that God will do here and will do it again, will we put it again, if we do not take heed. God will not restrict Himself to just one organization who does not want to move forward. He's going to call somebody within that who is willing, a faithful few within that who is willing to carry the banner, who is willing to proclaim the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ and who will not be afraid to lose their lives and reputation at the same time. Back to the screen. Notice he goes on to say, When a church proved unfaithful to the word of the Lord, whatever their position may be, however high and sacred their calling, the Lord can no longer work with them. Others are then chosen to bear important responsibilities. So God will not restrict Himself or be bound by just the organization. The Jewish nation were given a long time to get their act together. Well, when they fell, the leaders fell to proclaim the truth for this time, God within them, God has chosen a faithful few to do the work. And as uh, Malachi 4, 5 tells us on the screen, notice carefully, Behold, I will send you, who? Elijah the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Notice carefully, God says, I will send you, Elijah the prophet, within you, I will send Elijah. Within you, I will raise an Elijah. Key words there. I will raise an Elijah who will proclaim the message for this time and who will turn God's people from their wickedness, from wilderness, from ecumenism to the loving Savior, to our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. That is part of the three angels messages for this time the message or messages are first for God's people then for the world God will use these messengers to proclaim this message within his church within the organization to shake it to shake it and out of that out of that shaking he will have a People purify, just like Christ did. Christ came and shook the denomination in those days. Then He got a handful of, of them to shake the world for Him. That is the spirit, the power of Elijah. Let's pray. Loving Father which art in heaven, thank you for boldness you have given many who came before us under the penalty of death to proclaim messages because they love you with all their heart, mind, and souls and others who were perishing in their ignorance. Help us, Father, in these last days not to be like Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus who came out to see you by night, but to associate ourselves with you, whether if it's daytime or nighttime. Thank you for the many precious truths you have given unto us to sanctify, to bless us, and to prepare us for eternal glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.